Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Chicken Shawarma. Well, shawarma is one of those classic Middle Eastern dishes. Chicken shawarma is especially really popular here in the States, but it's popular all around the world. Consists of thin slices of seasoned meat stacked on top of one another on a vertical spit that rotates and you kind of just shave these thin layers off uh, little by little as the outside gets that great texture and as that meat gets cooked. So today we're making chicken shawarma. We're using chicken thighs that have been marinated overnight in a paste that we're getting ready to make here in just a moment. And we don't have a vertical spit, so we're gonna be using a horizontal one. We'll be cooking on the Napoleon P500 with that rear burner, that infrared burner, just toasting up the outside of our shawarma, of our chicken, as we shave it off little by little and enjoy it for a couple hours time. So we're gonna kick it off here with our marinade paste that the chicken's gonna be soaking in overnight. We're gonna start with three quarters of a cup of nice quality extra virgin olive oil. All right, so we're gonna call that three quarters of a cup there. We're gonna add a half cup of minced garlic. Next, we're gonna add a half cup of tomato paste. This is kind of our flavor base right here. Now we're gonna add a little bit more acidity to that with a quarter cup of white wine vinegar. These things are gonna to help to kind of tenderize the meat as well as add flavor. And then speaking of flavor, for our flavor base, we just need something with some good salt, pepper, garlic content. So we're going with Killer Hogs Texas Brisket Rub. And then we're gonna add some spices to doctor this up. So we'll go with a generous quarter cup of our flavor base. And then we're adding those extra spices. So a couple of tablespoons here of smoked paprika, a tablespoon of cumin, a tablespoon of coriander, and a tablespoon of oregano. And then we're just gonna brighten it all up with the zest and juice of one lemon. So we're just taking off that outer layer of the lemon, just the yellow part, really aromatic. And that can go straight in there. We'll just do this over the uh, sieve here to catch any seeds. And then one last thing that I almost forgot, I'm gonna add a little warmth to all this with just a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. Yes. All right, so now we're just gonna throw this in the Vitamix and blitz it up. Give that a taste. Ooh. That's got some intense flavor to it. And we're gonna drive all of that flavor right into those chicken thighs as we marinate them overnight. Now, this is one of those situations where if you don't have an overnight amount of time to marinate your chicken thighs, then give it what you have. If you got a couple hours, that's what you got. You're gonna get a couple hours worth of flavor out of it. But if you really want maximum results, overnight's the way to go. So here we have about four, four to five pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Uh, I've trimmed these up just to make sure there's no bones or anything left behind. And then we're just gonna hit this with our flavor paste. And we want to get all surfaces coated, so just going to get in there with our hands and get dirty. Now you could throw this in a bag if you like. Uh, I feel like the easiest thing that I like to do is just to throw it into the brine bucket and let it sit in the fridge uh, overnight until the next day. And we did that yesterday, luckily, so we don't have to wait. And I'll show you here in just a moment what it looks like. Well, this is our chicken that's been marinating overnight. If we look at the surface, we can tell that chemically not a ton has changed on the surface, which is good. We don't want to start cooking it before we start cooking it, but we have had plenty of time to really force that flavor into the chicken. All right, so here's our spit rod. We're going to try and put this right in the center of our spit rod, which means we need to get our forks in here to lock everything in place. And then we're going to kind of bookend all of this chicken with 
some onion. So we'll start by going right through the center of half an onion here and lock that down. Then we're just gonna come in piece by piece with our chicken, right in the center. Same thing over and over again. Slightly rotating the chicken so you get as uniform a shape as possible. And of course, all the flavor is coming from this marinade paste that we made. But we're not getting rid of that. We're leaving it right on there. Last one here. And then cap it off with another onion half. Squeeze it down tight. Put that other fork in place. There we go. All right, now I haven't fired up the Napoleon yet just to make sure that we kind of have a safe place to get this positioned without burning ourselves. But I'm gonna slide this into the rotisserie over here. And then we just wanna make sure that we lock this in. That way our spit doesn't fall down. And then today we're gonna to be cooking with the heat from the rear burner back here, the infrared. All right, so firing up the rear burner. We're also gonna go with these two center burners right underneath. And that's because as this stuff drips down onto these burners, it's gonna flare back up in the form of flavor. All right, so we'll flip that on. We've got high heat starting out, just cooking away at the outside. And then as the outside gets cooked, we're gonna come shave a layer off. Now while our shawarma is cooking away, we're gonna make a tasty little condiment to go along with it called tum. And tum is essentially an aioli or mayonnaise made without egg. So it's an emulsion of garlic and lemon juice and oil. All right, so here we have about a half cup of garlic cloves that I've cut in half and then I've taken the germ out of the center just to help so that there's no other uh, really physical obstacles in the way of creating this emulsion. So the way we do this is we'll just slice right through our clove of garlic and take the skin off. And then we'll take this end off here with that tough little bit. And then you can see underneath that, that's where that germ is. It runs right through the center. So we'll just start by taking that end off and then we're gonna take that round part out of the middle, just like that. But this is about 25 minutes in. You can see the very tips are getting charred. This will be more uniform as we start to uh, really shave this down because right now we've got these parts that are hanging out and you know we could take off some of these outer parts right here or we can just let them char up a little bit and we'll take them uh, once these, these parts that are a little bit lighter are done as well. So um, we don't have to start sawing away at this just yet but I wanted you to see what it looks like as the tips start to get um, browned or blackened even charred on the, the edges there. So it's really important that we get these garlic cloves blitzed down before we start to try to create this emulsion. Uh, we're gonna start off with that half cup of the uh, garlic cloves and we're gonna add to that a teaspoon of our Jacobson's black garlic infused salt. Only two things that are in there and the salt's abrasive so it's actually gonna help to break down that garlic a little bit. But you're gonna have to get in here and scrape the sides. That's just the nature of the beast. So we can continue to break this down finer and finer. So I've just continued to scrape this down and, and keep on breaking that down until you can see it's a little more than minced now. Really starting to release its juices. So speaking of juices, we're gonna add now a tablespoon of our lemon juice. So this is just some fresh squeezed lemon juice. Just a tablespoon at a time. We're gonna go slow on this. Another scrape. Let it go again. And what we're gonna to start to do now is to drizzle in our oil. Now typically with tomb, you want a fairly neutral flavored oil. So 
I've got one cup of avocado oil today here, but I'm also going to be adding some of our chili oil as well. This is a chili infused oil, just gonna pack a little extra punch. This is optional, but really elevates the flavor. So I'm gonna start by very slowly just drizzling in the oil. We'll go about a half cup this first round. And then we're gonna add a little more lemon juice and then a little bit more oil. I'm gonna take a peek down there and see that we are creating an emulsification. It's not broken. It should start to look like it's thickening, not breaking apart. As this comes together, you can add the oil just a little bit more quickly, but don't dump it all in at once. That's our first half cup. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more lemon juice now. We'll do another tablespoon. Why don't we take a peek? So you can see how the consistency's really changed. You know, it's not liquid and oil anymore. It's not just garlic starting to thicken up. We're gonna keep that going. All right, so that's one cup of avocado oil. I'm gonna add the last little bit of my lemon juice. It's probably just another teaspoon there. And that's really developing into that consistency that we want. Let's see what it tastes like. Ooh, got a real punch from that fresh garlic. I'm picking up the lemon too, it's bright. I wanna add a little bit of that chili oil as well. We're not gonna take this much further and we can always add a little water to adjust the consistency, uh, but I wanna get some of that chili oil in there at this point. Most of the flavor is there otherwise. I'm gonna start with just a quarter cup. Typically, tomb is this really bright white color. This chili oil is gonna darken that up a little bit, but it's definitely worth the flavor it adds. Yeah, now that's looking really good. But that's the consistency we're going for, so I'm not gonna add any more oil. That stuff's just really right where we want it as far as the consistency goes. Oh yeah, we get a little bit of that chili burn as well. All right, we're gonna call that good. All right, so we're sawing off this first outside edge. And like I said, this first one, the color is gonna be a little more extreme on the tips. And this is gonna to start to even out as we can shape this into a more uniform shape. I'm using a nice long knife so that I can stay away from the flame because it's hot in here. It's like between five and 600 degrees. But you can see that white meat not white meat, it's dark meat, but the white of the meat fully cooked. It's no longer pink, but man, look how juicy that is. All right, we're gonna get a little more consistent shape here. And that's when this thing's really gonna start to shine. Oh, dang, so much flavor and super juicy, but with just the right amount of crisp on the outside, we're gonna get more and more of this layers and layers. You can just kind of let it pile up. Start eating on it now if you want to. Otherwise, we're just gonna check back about every 15, 20 minutes, shave another layer off. All right, well, we're just working away at it. My gosh, look at the juice just dripping out of there. What a great technique for cooking up some chicken thighs. And the aroma and the flavors are amazing as well. Going relatively quick now. About every 15 or so minutes, you're ready to take another good heaping off. Let it roll. All right, guys, I'm getting a little impatient. We're gonna shave off a layer here. 
head over to the table and build up some bowls. There's lots of different ways for you to eat your shawarma. You just wrap it up in a little flatbread. But honestly, I love it in a bowl full of rice with a bunch of other stuff in there as well. So we're gonna go down with just a little bit of rice here. Bring in some of that chicken shawarma. And just a little bit of that tomb right on top there. You can mix this all in here in a minute. A little call back to our hummus recipe. This is our roasted pepper hummus. Go check out that video if you haven't yet already. And then just some fresh stuff. A little bit of tomato in here. Get some cucumber, a little red onion. We'll top it all off with just a little bit of our everything bagel seasoning. Boom, that's it. All right, I'm just gonna mix it all together. I wanna taste a little bit of everything. And that tomb, it's got a good kick to it, so don't go too heavy right off the bat. That stuff will stay good in the fridge for a couple weeks, so you can save some for later. Mm. This is comfort food, for real. For real comfort food. I mean, the flavors are fantastic. This is the kind of thing that you can eat in any kind of weather. You know, the freshness from, from the fresh fruits and vegetables that we put between the tomato, the cucumber and all that on top, really lightens it up. This makes it a great dish for the summertime, but at the same time, I could sit down with a bowl of this in the dead of the winter and be perfectly happy. The flavors are big. The marinade did its job. I don't know. Everyone showed up. I couldn't be more happy about it. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoyed the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.